The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. This book is cool. Welcome to this episode of This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Today we are going to explore a book by one of my favorite poets. Yes, poets. Jack Prolutsky. And this is a book that is full of his poetry. There's a poem I'd like to share with you. It's called Tommy Lost a Penny. Tommy Lost a Penny a nickel and a dime. Tommy lost his shiny watch and doesn't know the time. Tommy found his penny, his nickel and his dime. His watch was in a magpie's nest and keeping perfect time. I really like that poem and I love the illustrations that are in the book that go along with the poem. We have a special friend with us today to tell us a few of the reasons why he thinks this book is cool. With us today, we have Father Patrick Wilson. Hi, Father Patrick. How are you? I am well. Good to be with you, Beth. It's great to have you here. Can you tell me one of the reasons why you think this book is cool? I would say that because the poems are about people, animals, far off places, and there's a lot of nonsense in there, which just <laughs> makes it fun to read and anticipate what's going to happen. That's what I like about these poems in this book. I agree with you. I think the imagination that Jack Prolutsky brings to his work is very enjoyable. And I also like that the book is something you can pick up and read for two minutes or three minutes and you can read an entire poem. Right. Some books, when you sit down, you have to read a whole chapter or sometimes to make sense of it, you have to read the whole book. But this is the kind of book that you can pick up anytime, any place. And it's 28 poems in one book. So you can skip around, go to the one that catches your eye and they're all very fanciful. I, I, I as a child, I wasn't crazy about reading, but I did it. And it wasn't until I found a series called The Boxcar Kids, about a family of kids with no parents, they lived in a boxcar, that I began to read more and more and uh, really enjoyed it. So that um, I think reading for kids, for us, every word that you learn is like a, a key to a puzzle or to a new door that you open up and you've learned something. And once you've learned something, you're a different person, different person completely. And then you can share with people what you share and know from your reading. I have to share with you that when I was growing up, one of my very favorite series of books was also the Boxcar Children. So we probably read a lot of the same books. We're a party of two. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, I remember that. I also liked in this book that there were some poems that were about places, some poems that were about animals, some that were about people. I even noticed one of the poems was about someplace right in Florida. Close, and so we can relate to that. We can relate to that. And, and also the illustrations are wonderful. There's one of Mount Rushmore, and it's just very fanciful. It has a big black mustache across one of the sculptures there, so it's. <laughs> I think when I when I looked at the poems, I remember looking at Spotter and Swatter. Do you remember that one? I do. Yes. The otters, otters were playing, and I mean, you could just see them doing that. It was just amazing. And lying on their backs, they had clams on their stomach, eating, shucking. You, know, you can just see what the author wants you to see, but you can imagine all kinds of things. 
just go on and on and on and share that with other people. I enjoyed that so much about reading. And I think what you shared a little earlier about when you first start to read, it can be difficult and you might feel like you don't enjoy it. But what I've discovered and, and what almost all of my adult friends have discovered is that if you just keep at it, the more you read, the easier it becomes. And then pretty soon, you don't even remember that it was ever difficult. It just becomes enjoyable and, and something that you look forward to doing. When I started reading, I had a misconception. I thought to be able to read a word, you had to spell it. And that really scared me. Then I realized I didn't have to memorize it. I just had to be able to see it, recognize it, and put it into context. And then um, later on, spelling came with the spelling test. Yes, I, th I think um, all of us can, can share uh, those feelings. I remember the very first time that I ever got all of the spelling words right. I thought I was the smartest person in the world. It was a wonderful feeling. I never got all of them right. <laughs> <laughs> You're ahead of me. You're ahead of me. You know, I have to tell you, uh, being a priest, we have a school, St. Martha School, and I'm just amazed because at the masses, the children read, they lecture, and these first graders get up and say words like Philippians and Thessalonians. And I'm going, how in the world? When we, well, not you, but when I was younger, we started out with C spot run, and we <laughs> were just excited to be able to do that but it's come a long way. And I can tell they understand what they're reading, which is even better. Well, I, you know, I think the brain is a magnificent organ. We learn so much and surely by sharing great literature and poetry and having wonderful discussions with people who have read similar things to what we have read, it helps our brain continue to grow and that makes life fun. And imagination is, is the big thing, the big key, especially for kids, for adults too. But imagination, to be able to um, see what the author has for you, but go off from there and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, write your own stories and poems. That's really important. I enjoy that as well. Well, I want to thank you for taking time to be being with us today. It was great to discover that we had some things in common, but also to share my love of Jack Prolutsky and his poetry with you. So thank you so much. And I hope we run into each other very soon. I bet we do. I bet okay. we do. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm so glad that Father Patrick could be with us to talk to us about reading. Here's the picture he was talking about, about Mount Rushmore. Can you see the mustache he was talking about? I love the way books can make us smile and make us laugh and give us things that we can share with each other. One of the things that we've received from this book are some words for our word bank. Our first word is the word serenade. Serenade. That means a vocal or an instrumental performance, often one that takes place outdoors. Our next word is the word morsels. Morsels. That means a small piece or a small amount of food. Our next word is the word ominous. Ominous. That means threatening suggesting that something unpleasant is going to happen. We're going to add the word adorn to our word bank. Adorn, that means to add beauty or decorate. And our final word for the word bank is the word galoshes. Galoshes means a waterproof overshoe. You wear over your shoes so your shoes don't get wet. This book, The Frogs Wore Red Suspenders, has many different poems in it and some beautiful artwork. Beautiful colors and some serious pictures and some silly pictures. It really inspired me 
to want to create my own artwork. We decided to make a puppet. And we wanted it to be a frog, a blue frog. So we've made this puppet that I can make his mouth open and close. We made it out of paper plates. So what we did is took a paper plate and we colored it and folded it. And then on the inside of the paper plate, we colored it so it looks like the inside of the mouth. And then just by controlling the outside, we can make the frog talk. You can make any kind of an animal into a puppet. I've enjoyed exploring the book, The Frog's Red Suspenders, and I enjoyed talking with Father Patrick today. I'm hoping you'll take some time to read some of the poems in this book. Maybe you'll create a piece of art that goes along with one of the poems. If you do, please take a picture of it and share it with us at connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. We're also interested in your own episodes of This Book is Cool. Pick out a book that you really like and select three or four reasons why you think that book is cool. Include some words for our word bank and a suggested activity. You can send your episode to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. It was so much fun to explore all of the different poems in this book. It reminded me that magic can be on every single page. I think a lot about reading and I think how important it is. I wonder what my frog thinks about reading. What do you think about reading? Reading is the key to succeeding. I think he's right. Until we see each other again, my friends. Bye for now. What else do you have to say? <laughs>